I recently got a 2016 MacBook Pro. I got the base model without the touch bar. In this video, I will give you three reasons as to why I got the model without the touch bar and why you may want to consider this model over the touch bar model. Reason number one, price difference. The price difference between the touch bar model and the non-touch bar model on Apple website is $300. But if you buy from other retailers, the price difference becomes $350 to $400. I got mine from Adorama for $1349. Adorama does not have tax in California and other states, excluding New York and New Jersey. I'll have those links in the description. Also, on a side note, Amazon had this MacBook Pro for $1140 right when it came out. The pricing ended up being a mistake, but Amazon honored the price, so a lot of people saved a lot of money. I'm kind of mad because I wasn't able to catch that deal. I also presume that you might see a bigger price gap in the future for the non-touch bar model than the touch bar model in the future. Reason number two, better battery life. The non-touch bar model has 54.2 watt hour battery versus 49.2 watt hour battery on the touch bar model. That's a 10.8% increase. So if both of the model had the exact same specs except the battery, if the touch bar model got 10 hours of battery, the non-touch bar model would get 11 hours of battery. But there are more spec differences that causes the non-touch bar model to have even a greater increase in battery life. The touch bar itself takes more battery and the processor in the touch bar um, model takes more power. The touch bar has the Intel 6267U, which is a 28 watt TDP processor versus the non-touch bar model, which is the 6360U. Uh, this is a 15 watt TDP processor. This does not mean that the non-touch bar model takes half the power, but it still means that the non-touch bar model takes much lower power than the touch bar version. If you're wondering about the performance, the touch bar model does about 5-6% to better on the CPU and up to 10% better on the GPU. These are not gaming laptops, so if the touch bar model gets 22 FPS, the non-touch bar model would get 20 FPS. I suspect in total, the non-touch bar model should get about 15-20% to better battery life than the touch bar model. I'm a computer science college student. I need as much battery life as I can get. I use PDF versions of books including math and other English writing textbooks. I don't have a wall adapter in uh, most of my lecture halls. I need my laptop to last as long as possible. I would be personally willing to surf, uh, sacrifice some performance and feature for an extra hour to an hour and a half of battery life. I have been very pleased with the battery life with this laptop. With my use, I'm able to get 8 hours of battery life. I'm an aggressive Chrome user. I have at least 5 to 6 tabs open on any given time. 8 hours for me is very impressive. Reason number three, the one I could be wrong, but the touch bar for me doesn't seem that useful. To use the touch bar, you have to look down. It almost creates a distraction. Furthermore, the resolution of the touch bar is 2160 by 60 pixels, which is around 220 PPI. When I looked at the touch bar model in Best Buy, it looked a bit hazy. I haven't really heard anyone complain about this, so I might be the only one. Uh, I'm not convinced that the touch bar is the future also. I much prefer the keyboard to change my brightness, to change my volume, and change my backlit keyboard brightness. Also to add, you cannot add the, uh, you cannot change the brightness of the touch bar, which is also something I want to be able to do. If you get the non-touch bar model, in addition to losing the touch bar, you also lose, lose the touch ID on the top right corner which is something that I would have liked. So those are the three reasons why I went with the non-touch bar model. The biggest one for me is definitely the battery life. Even with my day-to-day -day use, I'm able to end my day with 15% of battery. So if I had the touch bar model, I might have ran out of battery. 
If I made any mistake in this video, please let me know. I will update it in the description. Be sure to look at the description for any correction and links for the MacBook Pro on various sites. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.